The Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme PBS, is a program of the Australian government that provides subsidised prescription drugs to residents of Australia, as well as certain foreign visitors covered by a reciprocal health care agreement. The PBS seeks to ensure that Australian residents have affordable and reliable access to a wide range of necessary medicines. The PBS has faced increased scrutiny as its cost has increased. The scheme assumes responsibility for the cost of drugs to patients in the community setting rather than while in hospital which is the responsibility of each state and territory. Together with Medicare the PBS is a key component of health care in Australia. Topic: History. The PBS was established by the Labor Chifley government by the Pharmaceutical Benefits Act 1947, which commenced on the 1st of July 1948, as part of a wider plan to create a British-style national health service. The scheme was an extension of the similar repatriation pharmaceutical benefits scheme established in 1919 for Australian servicemen and women who had served in the Boer War and World War I. Though the High Court of Australia ruled that most of Chifley's health care plans were unconstitutional, the PBS was ruled to be constitutional. Initially, PBS covered approximately 140 life-saving and disease-preventing drugs. Medicines on the PBS list were free to the consumer until 1960, when a 50-cent co-payment was introduced by the Menzies government. By 2003 the number of drugs included under the scheme had expanded to 601 general products which were marketed as 2,602 different brands. The scheme was appealing to policy makers because it required no major capital works program and could be implemented immediately without lengthy consultation with the medical profession. Topic: <laughs> Operations. PBS is governed by the National Health Act 1953 and National Health Pharmaceutical Benefits Regulations 1960 100. Pharmaceutical benefits under PBS may only be supplied by pharmacists and medical practitioners approved under the Act. Applications to list a drug on the PBS are administered by the Department of Health. Pharmaceutical benefits under the PBS are administered by Medicare Australia formerly the Health Insurance Commission under the Health Insurance Act 1973-100. A benefit under PBS is only given on medications which are listed in the Pharmaceutical Benefits Schedule. The medication may be listed for general use as an unrestricted benefit, or for a specific indication as a restricted benefit. When a PBS medication is dispensed by a pharmacist, the patient pays the patient contribution subject to concessions and safety nets and Medicare Australia pays the remainder of the agreed cost of the medication to the pharmacist. The cost of a medication is negotiated between the government, through the Department of Health, and the supplier of the drug. The agreed price becomes the basis of the dispensed price of the medication which is negotiated between the government and the Pharmacy Guild of Australia under the current Community Pharmacy Agreement. The dispensed price includes the wholesaler's markup, pharmacist's markup, and a dispensing fee. Pharmacies purchase PBS listed drugs from the wholesaler or supplier, and claim the difference between the dispensed price and the patient co-payment contribution from Medicare Australia. 
The PBS is separate to its counterpart, the Medical Benefits Schedule, which provides subsidized medical services such as doctors' consultations and diagnostic tests. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Patient Contribution and Safety Net. When purchasing a medication under PBS the maximum price a patient pays is the patient contribution also called a co-payment or out-of-pocket cost, which in 2016 is $38.30 for general patients. For PBS medications costing less than $38.30, the patient pays the PBS dispensed price plus an additional $1.17 safety net recording fee plus an optional pharmacy charge of $4.33 or less, provided that the total charge does not exceed $38.30. Concessional patients, i.e., low-income earners, welfare recipients, health care card holders, etc. and those covered under the Repatriation Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme RPBS pay a patient contribution of $6.20 in 2016. Patient contributions are compulsory and cannot be discounted by pharmacies. Safety net provisions in PBS reduce patient contributions when singles and families exceed in a calendar year the PBS safety net threshold. When a general patient reaches the general PBS threshold, their co payment reduces to the concession price for the remainder of that calendar year, while concession patients who reach the concession PBS threshold do not pay anything on PBS medications for the remainder of the year. The PBS safety net is separate from and in addition to the Medicare safety nets. Changes in patient contributions and the safety net over the years are as follows. Topic. Safety net 20-day rule. In an effort to limit the cost of PBS by discouraging patients from filling PBS prescriptions earlier than needed, in 2009 the safety net 20-day rule was brought in. Under the rule, a repeat prescription supplied within 20 days of a previous supply of the same medicine will not count towards the PBS safety net threshold. If the patient has already reached the safety net threshold, they will be charged the normal patient contribution instead of the reduced safety net amount. Topic: <laughs> Brand premium and generic medicines. In an effort to limit the cost of PBS, the Australian government introduced brand premiums on medications where cheaper generic brands were available. The brand premium is usually the price difference between the innovator brand and the generic brand. The patient pays the brand premium in addition to the normal patient contribution if they decline to purchase the generic brand. The brand premium paid does not count toward either safety net threshold and must still be paid even after the threshold is reached. Pharmacists are allowed to substitute generic brands for prescribed brands if the brands are flagged A in the schedule of pharmaceutical benefits, and if consent is obtained from the patient and prescriber. The prescriber's consent is always assumed to be granted unless brand substitution not permitted is indicated on the prescription. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Therapeutic group premium. 
On 1 February 1998, another effort to limit the cost of the PBS involved the introduction of Therapeutic Group Premiums TGPs on medications that are priced significantly above the cheapest medication in a defined therapeutic sub-group where the drugs are considered to be of similar safety and efficacy. The TGP is the price difference between the premium brand and the benchmark base price for drugs in the class. The patient must pay this TGP in addition to the normal patient co-payment contribution if they have been prescribed such a medication. The TGP paid does not count toward the safety net threshold. However, a prescriber may obtain an exemption from the TGP if adverse effects occurring with all of the base priced drugs, or drug interactions occurring with all of the base priced drugs, or drug interactions expected to occur with all of the base priced drugs, or Transfer to a base-priced drug would cause patient confusion resulting in problems with compliance. Such an exemption requires an approved PBS authority prescription from Medicare Australia. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Foreign visitors. PBS subsidies are available only to Australian residents who generally must produce a Medicare card and to certain foreign visitors whose countries have entered into a reciprocal health care agreement with Australia. These countries are the United Kingdom, Ireland, New Zealand, Malta, Italy, Sweden, the Netherlands, Finland, Norway, Belgium and Slovenia. Eligible foreign visitors must produce a passport to obtain subsidized medications. Topic: <laughs> Schedule of pharmaceutical benefits. The Pharmaceutical Benefits Advisory Committee PBAC makes recommendations to the Minister for Health and Aging regarding drugs which should be made available as pharmaceutical benefits, which are listed on the Schedule of Pharmaceutical Benefits. The schedule is published monthly since January 2007, prior to this it was published three times a year. In considering a medication for listing on the PBS, the PBAC considers factors including the conditions for which the drug has been approved for use in Australia by the Therapeutic Goods Administration. The PBAC only recommends the listing of a medicine for use in a condition which is in accordance with the Australian Register of Therapeutic Goods. The conditions in which use has been demonstrated to be effective and safe compared to other therapies. The costs involved. The PBAC is required to ensure that the money that the community spends in subsidizing the PBS represents cost-effective expenditure of taxpayers' funds. A range of other factors and health benefits. These factors may include, for example, costs of hospitalization or other alternative medical treatments that may be required, as well as less tangible factors such as patients' quality of life. Decisions on PBS listing are generally made on a health economics perspective, using cost effectiveness analysis. Cost effectiveness analysis evaluates the cost and health effects of one technology versus the cost and health effects of another technology, which is usually standard of care. A new technology whose incremental health benefit justifies its additional expense is deemed to be cost effective and thus reimbursed by PBAC. Drugs that provide little health benefit at considerable additional expense, such as the PDE5 inhibitors e.g. sildenafil and certain expensive cancer chemotherapy drugs are not listed on the basis of poor cost effectiveness. 
The principles that are applied during the evaluation of drugs for PBS listing are described in the PBAC guidelines. Topic: <laughs> Unrestricted benefits. Drugs that have unrestricted benefit listing on the PBS are available for general use without being limited to particular indications. Such items are typically those whose use in clinical practice is widely accepted. Examples include methotrexate, prednisone and amoxicillin. Topic: Restricted benefits. Certain medications listed on the PBS are available only for specific therapeutic indications or to patients meeting specific criteria where the PBAC has deemed that the cost-benefit analysis is favorable only in those indications, patients. These are noted as restricted benefits on the schedule. Medicare Australia places the onus of policing restricted benefits on the prescribers themselves and the pharmacists dispensing unless the listing is also authority required. For example, the COX-2 inhibitor celecoxib is listed on the PBS as a restricted benefit for the symptomatic treatment of osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Prescribers using celecoxib for other indications are expected to indicate non-PBS on the prescription, and or the pharmacist dispensing the celecoxib should charge the patient the full cost. <laughs> <laughs> Authority required benefits Some PBS medications are restricted and require prior approval from Medicare Australia. These are noted as authority required benefits on the schedule. Again, the PBAC has deemed that the cost benefit analysis is favorable only under in specific indications, patients under certain circumstances. Authority may be obtained by telephone to Medicare Australia known as phone approval or in writing from an authorized delegate of the Minister for Health. Prescriptions must be written on authority prescription form, and the approval number must be noted on the prescription. Pharmacists cannot dispense the item as a pharmaceutical benefit unless it has been approved by Medicare Australia indicated by the presence of the approval number. In obtaining a phone approval, the doctor simply identifies themselves using their name and provider number, the patient using their Medicare number, and when asked by the operator, confirms which of the conditions eligible for an authority the patient is suffering from. Medicare normally assumes the doctor's assertion that the condition exists as sufficient. For a written authority however, evidence of diagnosis and patient eligibility criteria such a pathology test results are usually required. Some drugs may have authority required streamlined status which does not require an explicit approval from Medicare, instead the doctor can use the authority code found in the published schedule for a given drug, indication. Topic. Sustainability In its first year, the PBS cost the Commonwealth Government £149,000 or $7,600,000 in 2009. The PBS now costs the Commonwealth approximately $6.5 billion a year to operate, despite consumers contributing around $1.3 billion in patient co-payments. 
According to a report by the Australian Productivity Commission the PBS is expected to cost 2.6% of Australia's GDP by 2045 up from 0.7% in 2005. Further attempts to restrain the growth in costs of the PBS may be needed, however, attempts to increase consumer prices of drugs have always proved politically unpopular. The comparative cost-effectiveness processes of the PBS nonetheless ensure it provides Australian citizens with more equitable access to medicines than in many other developed nations and for many the issue of sustainability of the PBS is a key component of the egalitarian architecture of Australian society is equivalent to asking whether that nation's education system or defence forces are sustainable. Former Federal Treasurer Peter Costello and the Liberal Party attempted to raise the patient co payment of PBS medicines by up to 30% in the 2002 federal budget, however, this measure was blocked in the Senate, in which various minor parties held the balance of power. However, in June 2004 the main opposition party, the Australian Labour Party, announced that it would allow the PBS co-payment increases to proceed through the Senate. The Grattan Institute Report March 2013 Grattan Institute Health Programme released a report titled, Australia's Bad Drug Deal, by Dr. Stephen Duckett, in which he states that Australia's pharmaceutical benefits scheme pays at least $1.3 billion a year too much for prescription drugs. New Zealand, which has capped its budget and appointed independent experts to make decisions through the Pharmaceutical Management Agency Pharmac, pays a sixth as much as the PBS for the same drugs. Public hospitals in two Australian states pay much lower prices than the PBS. In one case, the prices are just a sixth of PBS prices. In one extreme example the report states that the price of one drug, olanzapine, is 64 times higher on the PBS than in Western Australian public hospitals. This report proposes three ways Australia can regain its lost leadership in pharmaceutical pricing. Recent changes to the PBS In July 2007 changes to the National Health Act 1953 divided the PBS formulary into an F1 category for patented, single-brand medicines and an F2 category for generic medicines with reduced reference pricing between them. Academic opinion is divided about the value of these changes and the extent to which they arose from industry lobbying drawing strength from Annex 2C of the AUSFTA. Topic: 2012 price drop. The biggest cuts on prices of medicines in Australian history occurred from 1 April 2012 under the Gillard Labor government. PBS pricing for low-income consumers remained at $5.80 per script. Topic: 2016 removal of medications. 17 types of medication will be removed from the PBS, including Panadol Osteo, Aspirin, Iron, Folic Supplements, Electrolytes, and Laxatives. Other medications include medication for reflux, skin allergies, antacids, urine test strips, and vitamin B12 injections. This proposed plan will save taxpayers approximately $87 million a year. Topic: 
Topic See also Health care in Australia Social security in Australia <laughs>